it's quite apparent here, you know, the amount of plastic that we've got in the ocean. The mean plastic is one of the greatest dangers. The issue about the plastics. The amount of plastic. I just see lots and lots of plastic. It is really acknowledged what a, what a massive problem plastic is. Plastic pollution is a global problem. Plastic pollution is probably the most important issue that Orkney is facing. I remember on the Orkney Beachcombing website was masses of shotgun, plastic shotgun cartridges um, appearing along a certain stretch of, of beach, beach on the west coast and uh, they came from Newfoundland. And then it's travelling from all over, um, especially when you see like foreign, you know, food packaging for example, you know, that's come from hundreds of miles away. When you're digging in the sand, there's still those tiny bits of plastic rope and all that, you know, and it's like, okay, I've picked up the bits I can see, but if I was just to rake through the sand a bit, there'd be a whole more, you know, load coming up. But then there's an awful lot of um, fishing paraphernalia. There's boys and there's nets, and those nets upset me very much because they're still out in the sea catching fish, you know, ghost nets, and um, it, uh, that, that's just a horrible thought. I mean, a fisherman has a piece of net or, or to throw it over the side. Fish come along, eat it. It's the biggest curse that ever was because it's not being disposed of in the proper way. I think I operate quite a, a conservative fishing operation. I'm very careful about uh, the plastics I use that covers the bait and uh, any old creels, etc. I don't just chuck them over the side. Um, Otney Harbours is very good. They have skips for all the, the, the old gear. Uh, the old rope, old creels, and uh, just the, the the packaging that you buy your bait in, and we it's all for recycling, as far as I understand. If I ever see anything floating, uh, if it's any size at all, I usually try to recover it. That unless you take care of the place that you're fishing in, it won't be there for future generations. We invented the plastic. We use the plastic. We dispose of the plastic. So it's entirely within our power to stop that cycle, um, and we have to do it. The big danger now is overfishing, of course. Considerable overfishing. Scallop dredgers. I think they do a lot of damage in the seabed, especially the big dredgers. Uh, they churn up the seabed. And I've seen the machinery, it's just like a rotavator going across the seabed. It just rips along the, the seabed and, and then that's it. Yes, they're making a lot of money, but at what cost? Uh, I know when my father started fishing, if you set a creel and you didn't get two lobsters on it, there was something wrong. That, you know, that's who thick lobsters were. Just nothing like that number of lobsters. We used to use about 70 creels, maybe. Well, on a good day, you get about 60 or 70 lobsters. On a bad day, you get about 21 or 3. And uh, on a medium day, you catch about 40. <laughs> you, you need hundreds of creels to catch up many. When it was small boats, working away, lovely. But human greed, they go bigger and bigger and bigger. And now, there's big um, creel boats, fishing for lobes, well, for patterns. I think it, it's sustainable at this time, but if you get more in, it's going to be unsustainable. And now we're, we're, we're into a, a kind of wave that's saying, well, we must stop eating meat or cut down eating meat because cattle affect the environment. But so then people are turning to more to fish. And, f and scooping up, when you see nets coming in, they don't just scoop up the ones you want, they scoop up everything. We also, of course, face bigger challenges which are maybe harder to see, like climate change and the impacts of climate change on the marine environment, um, which are many and varied, some of which maybe are less visible to people. So. Um, there are changes already happening in distributions of, of different animals, particularly some of the supporting animals within the sea, plankton communities, and that's having knock-on effects on uh, other things that we do see a bit more, maybe like the seabirds. 
the temperature of the sea is increasing and that will have a general impact on everything that lives in the sea. We might not notice it quite so much here in Orkney because we're in a cold water environment. I'm very sad that the increase in sea temperature is probably to blame for most of the reduction in sand eels and hence bird life. And these are things resulting from circumstances well outside Orkney. It's true of any marine environment. Everything is mobile. Everything is transboundary. Everything is coming into our area of influence. You've got big pressures like climate change and then there's lots of little things that cumulatively add up and add up and are continuing to put more and more pressure on the environment as a whole, how it functions, and on the creatures that are dependent on that, and ultimately, of course, then on humans as well. I think it's a mixed story, so it can look very healthy on the surface, and many things are still very good here, but there are, there are increasing complex challenges. You go out on a day-to-day -day basis and you can still see wonderful things in the Orkney Marine environment. People are very engaged with it, but we are seeing losses um, and we need to be working to try and address those and maintain a healthy environment for the decades and centuries to come. I think Orkney's becoming a busier place. Even since I've moved here, we are seeing a lot more applications for fish farms. But we're also starting to see structures being brought into Scapa Flow for decommissioning. On top of it's already quite busy fishing activities. So there is a lot going on in Orkney waters, I would say. I would suggest some of the traditional ways might come back in terms of the agenda changing from being, uh, you know, economic driven to being sustainability driven small scale can work well in, in um, you know, small island communities. <laughs>